Hi guys, welcome here to this week where today we're talking about invert sugar. Now, invert sugar, for those of you unfamiliar with the con uh, concept, is a sugar where the sucrose molecule, which is a disaccharide, sucrose is actually not a, a simple sugar, it's actually um, closer to a dextrin or complex sugar, because it consists out of two molecules bound together, a glucose molecule and a fructose molecule, making it a disaccharide. Now, invert sugar is sucrose, which has gone through sugar inversion where the molecules have been broken apart, and I now have my simple sugars. So this is liquid glucose and fructose. Now, what do we use this for? Now, those of you that's already done training with us, any of our courses, we, in all of our courses, we talk about invert sugar and its uses. Um, whether you did the C1 introduction to distilling, C10 comprehensive distilling, W1, W2, W4, W5, doesn't matter which course you did, we would have worked, you would be familiar with invert sugar already. But those of you who haven't done uh, training with us yet, either online or in-house, um, invert sugar is used for a couple of purposes. Firstly, for what we call obscuration. Obscuration is the addition of sugar to hide the presence of alcohol. It's a way to make a spirit product taste less alcoholic, less ethanolic. It makes a 43% alcohol taste like a 38% alcohol. And when you, if you've done training with us, you would know the reasons why we do that when you look at South African liquor law and preferences from overseas consumers and so on, you understand the reasons for obscuration. But it makes the product more palatable without you losing alcohol strength. The other reason we use it is in liqueurs and spirit aperitifs, products where we are legally required to add sugar and, add and sweeten it, and it can be quite a lot that's required. In South Africa, for instance, for a liqueur or spirit aperitif, we need to add 75 grams of sugar per liter of product. The problem, however, comes in that if I sweeten with granulated sugar, with table sugar, uh, what happens is it precipitates out and you get sedimentation and crystallization at the bottom and the top of the bottle. With invert sugar, that doesn't happen because the inversion process is much less likely to be reversed, so you're not going to get as much or any crystallization formation and you won't get sedimentation at the bottom either. Lastly as well, it is a liquid so it dissolves very very easily um, when you want to mix it with the spirits. Uh, some people also use invert sugar to make fermentations because it is a simple sugar, it ferments a lot faster and easier. Uh, it is however quite expensive to do that. It doesn't really make sense to use invert sugar as a raw material it's cost prohibitive, um, so I wouldn't recommend that personally, but if you want to try it, by all means, do so. Now, it's available in different quantities. We have 100 ml bottles and liter bottles, and we can do special orders of even larger quantities, bulk orders of 25, in increments of 25 liter quantities. Um, but many different uses for it, and you don't need a lot. Um, for obscuration purposes, just to smooth it out, 15 grams per liter of product, that's all you need. If you want to make, um, just take the edge off a little bit, you can get that done with about 5 grams per liter of product is uh, sufficient to just slightly smooth it out. To substitute as well for glycerin, a lot of people use glycerin to smooth their spirits, invert sugar is a substitute for that as well. And lastly, another thing we can use it for, which I forgot to mention earlier, is with Old Tom Gin. Old Tom Gin, sweetened gin, not as sweet as a liqueur, but a little bit more than normal obscuration, about 30 to 35 grams per liter of product. That should give you a nice full rounded Old Tom Gin, which would obviously be more of a sipping gin and not necessarily a mixing gin. So, those are very quick and dirty some of the uses for invert sugar.